according to the book, this here and the badge is an MG, MGB Roadster, uh, 1978, we think, uh, on an S, 78, 79, um, yeah. So, belongs to a friend of mine, um, one or two of the subscribers on the channel have said it'd be nice to see you doing a, um, a classic car in the workshop during the winter months, so uh, I present to you a classic car in the workshop, and it's definitely winter, because we've picked the coldest day of the year to do it, it's currently minus one, minus two inside the workshop, and I know that for a fact because my dripometer over there on the gutter that normally leaks has frozen. So it's got to be minus one, minus two. The thermometer in the office says round about zero, but that's in the office, and we've got a candle burning in there just to keep us warm. But uh, as you know, the workshop, it's an old cow shed on the farm. So uh, yeah, there's no heating, and I can see on the roof lights, I can see six inches snow on top, so that's why the light's down a little bit. So anyway, yes. Gonna have a look around this. It's got a few issues and hopefully I'm gonna try and sort it out for him today. I've got the manual. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. He's got no heater, which isn't very good this time of year. And uh, it's running a little bit, uh, it's idling a bit rough. So we're gonna have a look at the carburetors. So yes, yeah, stick around. I'll show you around it. Uh, I found something in the boot you might be interested in, which might be an issue, but uh, yeah. We'll crack on. So, as I was saying, in the boot, if we open this up, I've just noticed down here a radiator cap, a bag of bits, gaskets, a thermostat, some connections, and then in this box here, we've got, look at this. A brand spanking new heater matrix so what does that tell us hmm not sure cars lovely and straight there's no uh, no rust on it it's in uh, it's in immaculate condition apparently he was telling me that uh, it's been in an old boys garage for the last 20 years stood um, and he's hardly used it and uh, my mate Bleaky, he's, uh, he bought this from him uh, and put it straight back on the road. So it's pretty simple, it hasn't been messed about with, um, but he says he's got no heater. Now I've had the engine running, got it up to temperature, temperature gauge on dashboard says normal, heater hoses are hot, thermostat housing's hot, radiator's lovely and warm, so we've got circulation. So. There's probably a thermostat in it, we think. So I'm gonna take that off and check anyway. But uh, I mean, look at this here. We've got double nutting. We've got odd washers. We've got all sorts of jiggery pokery going on there. Uh, looks like a new gasket. What's the chances of me getting those studs out without them shearing off? Probably zero, but uh, we're gonna try. Uh, bottom hose is warm, so we've got circulation. And then this is where it all starts to go wrong because this hose here coming off the water pump that goes over the top and into the heater box is ice cold. Consequently, the heater box is also ice cold. I haven't heard the fan running yet. Now, this heater there that comes out the bottom into the um, control valve is ice cold and the control valve is hot. So I've uh, I've messed about with it. It is free. It looks pretty new. It is moving, but something's not letting circulation. So either one of these pipes is blocked, or the matrix is blocked. That's probably why there's a new one in the boot. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, typical um, twin SUs. Uh, look original, but this thing won't start if you pull the choke out you can't give it any throttle it just starts when it wants to so uh 
we're going to have a look at all this cam set in here because it doesn't look right to me. Because uh, as soon as you pull the choke out, you can't get any, uh, it won't start. So dash pots are more or less seized solid. I'm putting some pressure on that now and I cannot push that down. So we'll have that out and put some proper oil in and basically give it a bit of a once over. So uh, yeah, where do we start? Do we start with the heat of them first, get the flow going, or do we start with the carburetors, get it running right, and then sort that out after? Or do we take the plugs out and have a look how it's running? Hmm. Right. Plugs out, I think. Let's see how she's running first. That will give us an indication of uh, what the carburetors are doing. Not too tight that one. I keep putting my, my uh, sockets back on the radiator and it's slowly warming them up. So they're not icy cold to touch. Mmm, very nice. Look at that. Very, very. It's the right colour. But that to me, when the phone focuses, looks lean, as though it's not getting enough fuel. What do you reckon? So, right then guys, I don't think you know this or not, but every, every workshop manual has a page in it on the um, ignition system page, and it gives you a colour chart of your spark plugs. Shows you how to adjust the gaps, etc. I mean, I'm probably telling you most of you how to suck eggs, but uh, I'm just going to show you. We took this one out. Now, I don't know whether it's the it's an NY, N9YC Champion, but obviously light brown biscuit coloured with little crumbs on it is normal. Black is too rich. We haven't got that. We've got oil fouling. We haven't got that yet. We've only took one plug out, but this one here, overheating. And that, to me, looks very similar. I've got no biscuit crumbs, and I've got a white glaze, like a high-temperature glaze on the electrode in the middle. Now, whether the plug's the wrong heat temperature setting, and it wants something a bit cooler, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to look in the information and see what plug it should have. But I reckon we've got that. We definitely haven't got that because we ain't got no crumbs. So she's running lean, which I suspected. She's running very lean, and uh, that's probably why it's not starting properly, because it's not, it ain't getting enough fuel. And also, this this car's been stood, and what I did notice, I just got a little hammer, and I tapped gently the bottom of the carburettors, and it it burst into life. So I think with it being stood for twenty years in a garage, there's some old fuel that's gone bad in the bottom of those carburettors and I reckon it's either clogging something up, a little bit sticky a bit, uh, bit varnishy and I reckon that's uh, that could be a problem so I'm going to take the carburettors to bits and have a look what's happening inside um, yeah so I'm just going to take the rest of the plugs out that's number one see if they're all the same see what the neighbours are doing because uh, obviously one and two are fed off that carburettor and three and four are fed off that carburetor. So if I take a back one out now, we can tell if they're balanced or not. Let's do it. Number four's out, same story. Very, very whitey, whitey, yeah, very whitey glazy colour. Which uh, says overheating, running too lean, too heat, too much heat. Hmm, okay. Okay, and there's the evidence we needed. Plug number three, black. Fouled. Sooty. Running rich. Totally different to the other two. Which, uh, let me show you. Where are we? That's number one. That's number three. Totally different colour. Number one, the electrode in the middle. Number three. So the carburettors are out of balance, which will 
cause it to idle badly, etc., etc., run, but uh, I don't think that's causing it to run hot. So let's put that one back in, and we'll take number two out and see what she's doing. And uh, we'll take it from there. So we're on plug number two now. Yep. Same story. A little bit better, but not much. So, yeah, so we've definitely got... Will you focus? Come on. You can do it. Focus. You can do it. Will you focus? No, it's not going to focus. Uh, did it focus then? It's focused. Look at that. There you go. Slightly different. So, uh, hmm. Carburetor's stripped down, I think. So I've managed to wrestle the four nuts off and all the fittings around the carburetor. So uh, we'll try and get them off now without them falling to pieces. And uh, I've already dropped a nut down there, which I've got to try and find. But uh, this silly uh, bracket that holds the bonnet up is always in the way because you've got to have one arm one side and one arm the other. Right, they're off. Now this is my problem. Rest that there a minute. While you get your hand round. There we go. That's the carburetors. Get those on here out of the way. Come on, that way. Now can we find they look okay. Somebody's been messing about with this because it's been and a bit of porting, as they say. I'll, I'll get you in in a minute and show you. Found it. There she is. So this is what it looks like around this side now. We've got uh, throttle cable linkage, choke, return spring. But look at this here. Somebody's been in with the machine. Don't think it's standard. It might be standard, I don't know. But it looks like somebody's been in there. Making that a little bit bigger. See the, the clean machining marks. So uh, anyway, yeah, let's carry on. So we've got a box of uh, magnetic tray full of little bits. Got the spring, the vortex chambers for the uh, SUs. And then over here on the bench, we've got the carburetors. So I'm just gonna clear this off, make some room so I can work. Right, what I'm going to do now, I've turned the carburetors upside down, so that's the bottom. So I'm going to try and get these four screws out on each side. Just see what's going on in there. Um, and then we'll take it from there, see what's... Because I suspect there's some goo in there, so some gluey stuff or goop or something. A little bit of petrol's come out when I've tipped it over. Doesn't look that bad, I don't think the shafts are worn. But uh, this is going to come apart in a minute. I've only got the fuel line there holding it together because they are individual carburetors. So um, I'll take those off, have a look inside and uh, see what happens then. Oh, 
Okie dokie then. Right. Got the... Uh, we've had the float chambers out. Had a look inside. There was some little bits of dirt in the bottom. Not a lot. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So um, I've cleaned those out. Given them a little blast of air. Put that back together. I've flipped the carburetors back over. So that's as you look at them on the car now. Left bank one plugs one and two. Right bank three and four. Now then right if i can get this camera to focus can you see in there that there is the bottom of the needle jet housing in number one okay that is the needle jet housing in number two now that is raised up it's a little bit higher okay than this one which is is lower so that's the imbalance in the fuel okay so what happens is as the needle just let me so what happens is as the needle in the swirl pot goes into the middle of there and goes up and down obviously that's tapered that needle, you can't see it with your naked eye, but that needle is tapered. And the further down the hole it gets, it blocks it and lets less fuel out. Okay, so consequently, the air fuel mixture screw, which is on the side just there. Okay, so what you need is a little screwdriver. As I turn that, it's very difficult because I'm zoomed right in. As I turn that now, you will see that needle coming up in the middle okay so all the way up there is no fuel restricted all the way down once you get it to sort of level there is sort of midway and as you take it down and it goes down that's letting more fuel in so it'll run a lot lot richer richer than bill gates okay and that goes right down there till it stops so what I do, whenever I strip the carburetors down, I set them both perfectly level, okay? And then, for the richness, I take it down and I count the rotations of the screwdrivers, okay? So back to the middle, that's level, and all the way down is one, two, three rotations three and a half rotations and i'm at the bottom okay can't go any further that is as much petrol as that carburetor will take and it's flat out okay so then what i do i know it's three and a half turns so i bring it back to the middle i set that one and the other side both the same and i know it's three and a half turns is the maximum fuel So what I do, I set both those in the middle and I know, you know, that when you wind it down, it's three and a half turns. So then when it's on the car, the car's running, you can adjust it one turn at a time and you can get them both the same. Okay, that's a little hack I learned a long time ago on twin carburettors. So normally they're all right in the middle. So then you can judge it in half a turn, quarter of a turn, and you can balance both sides identical. And if you've got those settings right, you are 98% there, allowing for um, wear on the tapered needle. But if you're putting new needles in, they're going to be all right. So I set both these the same, and then we put it all back on the car, we get it running, and literally it's quarter of a turn at a time for richness. Okay, it doesn't matter about going the other way, because it it won't run past there anyway because it's it's got not enough fuel going in if that makes sense so let's uh, put it back together get it on the car see if we can get it running and then we'll adjust it up and it should be about right right i've got the uh, carburetor back in um it's all fixed in all piped up um i've had it running 
dog rough uh, we've got to adjust all the settings but i've had to have it running with uh, i've set the choke so the, the cam on the choke comes on so that um, it warms up i've got it more or less warm the fans just kicked in uh just got to put some dash pot oil in proper stuff uh, and then we'll we'll see what happens okay so yeah so everything's back on i've just got to put some dash pot oil in there because uh, the little idle floats aren't floating so we've got some proper stuff this is very very thin very very thin dash pot oil okay if you can see in the jug that that's what was in before looks like 2050 when you put this in take the lid off that would help yeah so th this other stuff's very very thin very very you can see the difference it's like half the half the viscosity so we'll, we'll put a little bit of that in right guys this is the this is the proper dash pot oil it's half the viscosity of uh, what engine oil what was in it before so we'll pour a little bit of that in that's all it needs two or three dribbles oops get some in in a minute so the idea is when that goes in like so you can push it up and down it's supposed to float not uh, not fight you all the way in like it did before there we go oh that wants a bit more in a bit more in that one that's better that's better just check the other one yeah you should just get when he's in you should just get a little bit of resistance and that's all you need. Yep, it's a float. It floats, that's all it does. Yep, and just check that that lifts up and it floats back down, which it does. And that one does as well. Well, yeah, so uh, right. Get it running. Now I'm just going to adjust the air to fuel mixture. So by turning it clockwise you should hear the engine note pick up. Now it's bogging down so it's the other way. So I'll turn it back anti-clockwise. gone too far so we'll turn it back same on the back one clockwise just putting more fuel in until it bumps which is there and we'll back it off. So it picks up. It's there.
Right, I've got it dialed in, nearly. Just wants fine adjustment. So what I'm gonna do is let it cool down five minutes, take number one plug out, see what she's doing, uh, get it to top dead center on the compression, make sure the timing's okay. Then I'm gonna slacken the timing off, uh, undo the vacuum, and um, we're gonna just see whether we can just tweak the timing a little bit. Just, uh, we'll check the points as well and we'll take it from there we'll get that set up right and then we can dial the carburetor in it's just bogging down from the bottom um, and I've no more adjustment to go so let's see what we can do with that let's get the let's get the uh, timing sorted right then got it to uh, top dead center the easiest way to do it is take the spark plug out get a very thin screwdriver and just stick it in and you'll feel the top of the piston and I know that you can't you can't really see it on the camera I need a boroscope but I can see the top of the piston and I put a big uh, big ratchet on the on the crank bolt just there like so and then you can turn that backwards and forwards and you can watch the piston rock and the screwdriver lift up and down okay and then what you want to do is make sure your rotor arm which is there should point towards number one spark plug and then when you put the cap on it should correspond with the number one lead going to the plug then you know your ignition timing set at top dead center okay i've had a surprise in here it's got electronic ignition I expected some points in there but uh, no it's got electronic ignition so that's all good so I'm just gonna I've loosened the uh, five is it five seven seven sixteenths I've loosened it's getting very difficult to film now because it's going dark Um I've loosened that nut off down there which is seven sixteenths so now the um the distributor will move left and right so i can adjust the timing give it a bit take it a bit off i think it's should be about 13 degrees i'm going to check the manual but i think it's 12 or 13 degrees before top dead center it fires at its best so i'm going to put that back together put the plug back in and uh, see that i can adjust that Right, got the uh, timing gun on. Uh, I've set the timing. Um, just advanced it a little bit. It seems to like it. Um, and I'm just uh, just trying to dial this in now, basically. So uh, underneath there, there's a little little uh, thing there on your thumb, and the idea is. When it's nearly right and you push that up, it tries to stop the engine. And it's doing that just on both of them. So that's working. Um, yeah, I've got some, some fantastic pickup. So, uh, yeah, we're not far off. We're not far off at all. Right, that's it. It's uh, it's too cold. Can't can't feel my old uh, finger ends. So uh, yeah, I can't do any more now. I've set the timing. I've got the carburetor nearly dialed in, not far off. So I'm going to let it cool down, and then tomorrow we're going to take the um, heater matrix out, flush that, get that sorted, get the heater working, put some antifreeze in it, 
and then we can take it for a drive and make sure there's no flat spots as we're as we're driving through the gears and uh, we'll tweak the carburetor as we go and then uh, yeah she's she's about done can't really do anything else to it so uh, and then we'll take the plugs out and check see how they're burning again just to make sure everything's all right so uh, yeah so uh, i'll see you in the morning right guys we're back on the mg this morning uh, and uh, look <laughs> Took that pipe off, that's the heater pipe that uh, goes from the engine manifold block to the heater. I'll just turn the camera around so you can see. Yep, so this is the pipe, goes uh, from there onto the manifold thing there, which when you operate your hot and cold inside the, uh, inside the cabin, it moves that, okay? So what I've just... <laughs> What I've discovered is, when you put your finger in the back of there, well you can't, it's block solid with jellyfied antifreeze. Well, there we go, see it? Just like earwax. That's all block solid in the back of that valve. So what I'm going to do is whip that valve off and uh, we'll have a look at it. And I'm hoping that that one's not blocked either going into the core. See if we can get that working. Because there's water coming out of the heat, it's circulating that way, but it's not coming out of there. Right then guys, we're back on this. I've took the uh, valve housing off, okay? And look, focus, block solid. That's supposed to be hollow. And the outlet pipe, focus, come on. Block solid, and the core into the engine block solid that is all oh there we go it's just skinned over now we've got we've got movement now there we go that's why the heater wasn't working we've got a bit of movement now but yeah that one's cleaning out in there and that my friends is why you should not dr dry store your car for a long periods of time with antifreeze in because all it does is turn to jelly and block all the cores up so yeah there you go so we'll get that cleaned out now hopefully oh god look at it got a drill bit there just look at that it's like cleaning your ears out Yeah, on that side. Oh, there we go, breakthrough. And all it is is just congealed antifreeze over the years. There we go, that's empty. <laughs> Tasty antifreeze. Mm. Yeah, right. Right then guys, I've got the uh, heater valve all put back together, cleaned it out, put it back together, made a new gasket for it, I've got it bolted on. Um, just got the engine running now, running it to temperature. Doesn't look like we've got any leaks yet. Um, thermostat's nearly getting warm, so uh, yeah, that's what we've done. She's back on, all wired up. That, uh, that that pipe's getting warm already to the heater box. And the return pipe is also hot. So yeah, so what I've done is uh, obviously you fill it with water through here. Not there, that's the lowest point. So you put water in here and then what you do, you can burp it basically. You can let any air out, any air bubbles that's coming. 
out of there and then you just put that back in and uh, nip it up So we'll let that get up to temperature and see whether the heater works. Yeah, that's lovely and warm. No leaks on that. Return's getting hot now. So, you'll have to take my word for it, but that is hot. There is warm air coming out of there, and that one. And we're only on speed one on the fan. Speed two, yeah. Hell of a difference. So yeah, so the motto of the story is don't leave your car stood with antifreezing for a long, long time, like 20 years. Because it goes to jelly and it blocks all your waterways up. So I'm, what I'm going to do is run this for a couple of days and I'm going to flush the water system out again, make sure there's no more bits in it. And then uh, when I'm happy with it, we'll uh, put some antifreeze in. So I've just turned the heater dial, you can't see it because it's dark in here, uh, down to cold. I'm going to run it now and make sure the uh, valve has turned the hot water off, which it has, it's going cooler now, I can feel it. The temperature's changing, so we know the valve's working. So I turn that back up to hot. That's gone all the way around to hot. And she's coming warm again. And there you go. You'll have to take my word for it, but yeah, radiator's red hot, thermostat's open, top hose is hot, bottom hose, uh, she's running. We've got this one here, red hot, red hot, circulation's fantastic. Temperature gauge is uh, where it should be, just below centre, and the heat coming out of here is lovely, like an oven. So that's it, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful um, and the rain stops we'll take it for a drive make sure it's all right through the gears final tweaks on the carburetor just to get that balanced up right it's 99% there uh, and put the air filters back on and turn the tick over up one little turn just to allow for the air filters uh, and that'll be it see how he goes with it so yeah so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon Last bit, we've just uh, took the thermostat housing off, checked the thermostat. We've got a new one, brand new one. We've tested it, it does open, ran it in the kettle, opens at 88 degrees, which so it's like a little bit of a winter stat. We'll put that in. I've pre-filled the cylinder head with antifreeze and everything, so we'll put that in. We'll put the cover on, like so, with a new gasket. We'll talk that down and then uh, we'll burp it and bleed it through there and add in any more coolant as, we, as, uh, as necessary. Get it running, get it up to temperature. And I know some of you are going to be saying, well, you don't do it like that, blah, de, blah, de, blah. You need a vacuum gauge, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And it'll never run right like that. But I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. It's the way I do it. So take my advice if you want, if you're not then uh, you know it's a learning curve isn't it but uh, before we got it we couldn't get this started so yeah <laughs>